Today's video is gonna be a little bit different than my average video, but we're talking about something that I am really passionate about, and I wanted to share it with you guys. If you're not interested in the topic, go ahead and skip this video. I'll get back to my normal videos later. Uh, if you're familiar with the channel, you know I do a lot of gig economy videos. I've tried out a ton of different gig apps and worked for a bunch of them to kind of help you guys understand the best ways to approach these apps, how to make more money. Uh, but during this process, I've decided to start learning how to code and kind of learn a skill that's gonna be more valuable to my future. So in this video, I wanna go through everything about the coding languages that I'm learning, a little bit about my background so that you can understand how I got to this point where I decided to learn how to code, uh, what I think it's gonna to take to learn these different languages, how I plan to apply them, what exactly I can do with them, and what I'm using to learn these languages. So if that interests you, maybe you do work in the gig economy, but you're using this as a side hustle to kind of better yourself, and you're looking at something like coding, you think it could be interesting, no matter what your background is, if you feel like you might relate to this, uh, then go ahead and stick around because I'm gonna cover a lot of different stuff in this video and really looking forward to do this one. I gotta say, I've been looking forward to this uh, more than a bunch of the other videos I've made because I have really been putting a ton of time into this. For the past three or four weeks, I've actually made very few videos because I've been studying uh, six to eight hours a day. So I spend a lot of my time usually at the library studying I'm in the car right now because I'm heading back from the library. Unfortunately, they don't like people filming YouTube videos in the library, I can understand. You know, it's probably not a good idea, so I decided to do it here in the car, which is kind of weird. Uh, you know, not the most common place to make a video about coding, but I figured to just go ahead and go for it. So let's break this down. So let's start with the coding languages that I'm learning and why I'm learning those languages. I'm looking to do something related to data science. I really like numbers. I like analyzing stuff and you know figuring out solutions with numbers. And I always liked languages in high school. So I decided to go with data science for a couple of reasons. And one of those being that the average paying job in data science is really good. The average is like six figures, uh, something kind of crazy. Now I definitely do not expect to make that right off the bat. And honestly, I don't really care if I make that much ever. I don't need to make six figures to be happy, but having a higher paying job is always a good idea. So I figured that data science might be a good place to start. And I'm using Code Academy. I've talked about this before. I've kind of done a shout out in previous videos because I really like the learning style that they provide. Uh, but I'll get into all of that later. For now, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit right here about what I've been learning. And let me just pull up my laptop for you. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys this right here on the screen, actually one of the lessons that I've been working on. And so this uh, right there, that was um, Python. I'm doing a lesson on Python functions and I've already covered a lot of the different SQL stuff and I'm in this uh, basically lesson plan where I cover everything that I will need to know for data science. It's supposed to take about 12 weeks and I'm about 20% done right now. Uh, I'm kind of behind schedule because I actually took a class on Python. It was Python 2, one of the older versions. And I did this before because it was offered for free on the platform. I didn't know if I actually wanted to pay for Code Academy. So I just did all the Python stuff for free outside of data science. And now I'm going back through a lot of that, uh, but some updated Python 3 stuff. So it's a little bit more relevant now, uh, but I can definitely use that old stuff that I studied in Python 2 to apply to this. And after taking that original class where I learned all of Python 2 over the course of a few weeks, I decided that Code Academy Pro, which is what I'm doing right now, is 100% worth paying for because they charge me $40 a month and I get access to all courses. So on my current timetable, I'm expecting this to take a few months for me to learn everything I need for data science. And that's gonna total out to $120 if I'm completely on schedule. Now, if you compare that to a college degree, which can cost 20, 30,000, sometimes even upwards of six figures if you go to a private university, this feels like it's really a good deal. And I'm learning a skill that I can apply uh, to an industry that's, go that's growing really fast. And I think I can probably either land a good job with this or contract out my skills and get paid a decent hourly wage with this new knowledge, maybe even using it uh, on some personal businesses that I you know, hopefully will start in the future. There's a lot of different angles that I can go with this and that price tag just seemed really good. Now this video at the moment is not sponsored by Code Academy, 
but I do feel like they offer a really good service. And there's a lot of different ways that you can approach learning how to code. I do have a friend that went to a coding boot camp, and that's actually the first route that I looked at when I started learning how to code. There was one offered through the University of Washington. Now I actually did my undergrad at UW. I studied accounting in the Foster School of Business there, and I kind of took that degree and worked for a few years as a discovery analyst at a law firm outside of school. So I'm familiar with the UW, and I thought maybe doing a boot camp for them was a good idea. So I signed up for their email list, and I found out that it costs about $12,000. And then furthermore, after some research on Quora, I saw that uh, the company that UW outsources to put on these boot camps actually isn't really UW. It's some other company, and it's not the best place to learn how to code, you know, at least from what I read on Quora and some other sources. So I figured I would just go the whole Code Academy route. It seemed like the right route for me. I'm not the type of guy that can just pick up a book and learn how to code. I did watch another YouTube video of some dude that did that uh, himself, and I have mad respect for that. You know, the fact that you can just pick up a few books and teach yourself that way. I personally like to have the lesson plan laid out in front of me. I like to kind of challenge myself and know when I get things right or wrong and have those building blocks to work off of. And it's kind of crazy to me that Code Academy offers all of that at such you know, a low price. It's kind of perfect for my learning style. I don't need a bunch of people around me uh, to kind of motivate me. And I don't need to commit to paying a lot of money uh, to make sure I'm working towards something. I know some people actually like to sign up for something and pay for it and, you know, have a large price tag on it. It motivates them. I'm not one of those people. I always like trying to find the best deal. So I feel like this was a really good deal for me. And so far in this data science program during the first couple few weeks of it. I've been learning a little bit with SQL and now getting back into the Python stuff. SQL is supposed to help me kind of structure and analyze tables in Excel and then Python kind of is a more powerful tool that I can use for a ton of different things outside of Excel but it's also very helpful for building off of SQL uh, to do some really cool stuff with that. And I will say that I'm really glad that Code Academy kind of offers this freemium version where there's some courses available because when I started out there was definitely a lot of uncertainty I'm the type of person who's goal oriented I like to see myself making progress and I had no idea what I was doing when I got started I've done some HTML and CSS in the past uh, but doing anything more complex than that always kind of scared me a little bit and you know the HTML CSS stuff was stuff that I could always just look up online find the answer real quick apply it to a website if I needed to uh, but when I started diving into this Python stuff right off the bat, there is definitely some times when I'd be doing a tutorial and I would miss like three answers in a row. It was super frustrating, but the more I stuck with it and the more I kept trying at it, the more it started to come naturally. And then I would get asked a question through Code Academy and feel like I could just start typing right off the bat. It was kind of just coming to me naturally, uh, like a second language. So there is that period up front where, you know, I kind of struggled a little bit. I'm sure it's different for everybody, but for me personally, it kind of, you know, cleared up what sort of mindset I needed to have approaching this because it's not something that you can just, uh, you know, kind of do here or there and be semi-committed to and learn it. You really have to take an, an approach of wanting uh, to get past this, wanting to work, uh, put a lot of energy into it, and definitely, you know, pushing yourself to get through the hard parts. And this is definitely a major time commitment. As I mentioned, for me, it's been like six hours a day, sometimes more, sometimes less. It really depends on what my day has to offer. But I do make sure to kind of set aside a certain amount of time each day to apply to it and build off of that. Because if I take a couple of days off, I definitely feel like I'm, you know, losing something that I have to refresh myself. So I like to kind of stay fresh and constantly hit this, constantly approach it. I know everybody's different. I'm sure people could learn coding while they work a full-time job, uh, you know, just learning it in the off hours. Some people might learn it faster than me. It might take them only a couple of hours. There's really only one way to find out, and that's just to, to dive into it. Um, but the approach that I'm taking, I really feel like has worked well for me. And I've worked really hard to kind of put myself in a position where I can put that much time into learning code. Uh, it wasn't just like, an impulsive decision. I've been saving a lot of money, putting a lot of money aside, working on businesses that are more passive. I have an affiliate website. I also have this channel, which surprisingly brings in a couple grand a month, even when I'm not making that much videos, because I worked so hard in the past just to put up all of those videos that are kind of like evergreen content. So it's something that people still find valuable uh, a few months after the fact, after I've posted them. 
And so that's what it took for me. I kind of like to have uh, that income coming in, but everyone's different and a lot of people can, you know, probably do this while they're working a full-time job or they might not be as concerned about, you know, having as much cash in the bank. Whatever it is, just finding out that mix that you need um, to kind of take some time and, uh, you know, allocate that towards learning how to code if it's something that you really want to do because it will be a major time commitment for you. And as I mentioned, I did want to give a little bit of background about myself. If you've been watching the channel, you probably know a little bit about me, but I haven't really gone into everything. And in this video, I mentioned that I did go to school at UW. I learned accounting. I worked as a discovery analyst for a couple of years, and I found that pretty interesting. I actually liked just uh, looking over you know, old cases at the law firm and getting things organized and ready for the discovery process. But the fact was there just wasn't a lot of upside within that position for me to continue to grow my career. And so at that point, I decided that I wanted to start you know, doing other stuff on the side. And I started a rideshare blog. This was long before the YouTube channel. I actually had a lot of information for new Lyft and Uber drivers to start working. And it actually worked out really well. So uh, sometime later, I decided to quit my full-time job and just you know run with these uh, affiliate websites, see if I could put a ton of them uh, more up. And the next two or three just like failed miserably. Um, you know, I was lucky enough that the first one went really well, but it was kind of like one of those blessings that also has some unintended consequences uh, because, you know, the fact that I had done so well right off the bat uh, kind of gave me a little bit of an ego, uh, you know, on that first website and blog. Just the fact that I could make good money off of it made me think that I could just start a company and do really well when in fact, uh, you know, the next couple of websites didn't do that well. So I was in this position where I had had some success and I had quit my full-time job and I still thought, you know, I'm going to continue to just like start these companies. I've had success. I can do this. I didn't, you know, always like working for the companies that I'd worked for. And so I thought maybe I was just one of those people that had to be an entrepreneur. And in this time period and a couple years after I started a few, you know, projects that did all right, but I couldn't really call any of them companies. Um, I decided to take another job as a sales kind of account manager and it was one of those jobs that you just take because they'll take a person who wants to you know work their way up in the organization and I realized really quickly that this also wasn't really for me I'm not really a sales guy and doing the day-to-day -day account management while it's a job it was a good source of income it wasn't really a career going forward so once again I was off on my own and you know, then came the YouTube channel, then came gigsharks.com, and these are a couple of projects that I've worked hard on to build up some passive income with. But once again, you know, neither of them are like a career. So I'm sitting here uh, trying to find something that I can build off of, you know, like a skill set, something that can really add value to an organization. And I've heard a couple of people say, you know, that if you're not in the workforce, you're not employed and building on that skill set that you're kind of getting behind. And that really started to scare me, the fact that, you know, I was working really hard. I am not a type of person that likes to sit back and just chill. Um, but I wasn't really working on something that I could build and, you know, build off of in the in the sense of a career. So that brought me full circle all the way back to coding. And that initial blog that I mentioned that I had started that did pretty well, um, I actually outsourced almost all the coding on that. So I would find people on Upwork and Fiverr to do most of that for me. And once again, you know, kind of the ego was there where my project, uh, this rideshare panel blog was making so much money that why would I take the time to learn how to code when I could just find someone else to do it for a reasonable price and I could focus on, you know, the big picture stuff or whatever I called it. Um, I've learned the hard way that that's not the right approach that, you know, I really need to be humble and focus on the small stuff and work hard on that and, you know, add value to an organization in that route. And so if you're in a similar situation, uh, hopefully you find this video helpful. I know I didn't go too much into coding or what I'm actually, you know, learning about it, but I have been learning a lot, you know, within both Python and SQL. And if you guys do find this useful, leave a comment down below. Let me know. Maybe I'll make some more videos about coding. Uh, maybe I'll get outside of the car, actually go inside and sit at my desk and do it there because it's probably a little bit easier for me to go through stuff in there. Uh, but let me know. I'd love to hear that feedback. If not, I'll still be making occasional videos about the gig economy because I do like trying out new apps and having those side hustles. But I wanted to let you guys know, uh, you know, where I'm at in this journey. And hopefully it applies to some of you. I'd love to hear about what you guys are doing outside as well. 
Uh, so make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel.